Good morning. It feels really strange not to say what day it is. <laughs> we'll just call this bonus cook down <laughs> day one since I plan to finish out the year continuing to cook out my refrigerator, freezer, and working pantry meals. Baby, it's cold outside. Oh my goodness. Remember when they were picking on that Christmas song last year? <laughs> so ridiculous. <clears throat> this year, it's, uh, what was it? God rest you merry gentlemen. Because it's about gentlemen. So anyway, um, boy, I'm really liking this raspberry, chocolate raspberry coffee. It's really, really good. <clears throat> well, today I have to finish up some odds and ends, finish wrapping a gift or two, and then I have to start cleaning up because I don't want to wait till the last minute to do that. Do a little dusting, a little vacuuming, clean up the dog hair. So not a real stressful day. So outside the storm is raging. It blew over my topiaries in the front. I'm just going to leave them there until the wind dies down. And uh, it's zero degrees and it's going down to minus two. Winter is here full force, and I know a big part of the country, we're all in the same boat. The weather is just not being nice. So it would have been nice to have a 40 degree Christmas, but nope, we're definitely getting a white Christmas. We don't have a ton of snow. We have snow, and it's blowing but it's not like we have, uh, you know, a foot of snow, so far, anyway. I don't know what's coming. <clears throat> but anyway, what comes will come. Can't control everything in your life. So, we will take a look in my refrigerator later, and uh, we'll see a couple of meals, and see what's, uh, what's what in there. And then, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put together my lasagna today or if I'll do it in the morning, Christmas Eve morning. But that's really the last thing that I want to have to do before the festivities. And hopefully, we'll have festivities and it won't be too cold or too much snow. I'm more concerned about the too much snow. <clears throat> and I hope none of you have any power outages. That would be a real disaster. So you guys stay warm and safe. All right, I'm going to enjoy my coffee on this blistery cold morning. And I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll see what the day brings. Well, my topiary's knocked over, and the other one is totally in the bushes. My neighbor better get his garbage can. And I'm filming through the glass, which is fogging up. But, oh, not pretty out there. All right, I'm going back in. Too cold for this girl. It's cold out there, huh? Yes, you don't want to go pee-pee out there. No, I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to go pee-pee out there either. And that's right. <clears throat> Bandit, he's got the right idea. <laughs> and little Lizzy, she's all cozy in the blankets. <laughs> Keeping warm. Wow. 
Wow! Snow is blowing right in. Gotta wait for my puppies. You gonna try it, Lizzie? Nope. <laughs> Poor baby. Good thing I taught her to go on the pee pad. I had the foresight to have a vision of this. Oh, come on in. Uh, gonna try it again? Okay, all hey, back morning. in for breakfast, and this is something I very rarely eat. I'm going to have a bowl of cereal. So this is cinnamon checks, which is really tasty. I do like cinnamon checks, and I like a cinnamon special K, cinnamon pecan. And then I have oat milk unsweetened from my fridge. So, and a banana. The only way I really like cereal is with a banana in it. And I have all this oat milk I want to use up. So, um, those of you who want to get into indoor gardening, this is called Malabar spinach. And I've been rooting it in water. And the leaves have a like a waxy, spinachy kind of flavor. And it grows really well inside. I've had this inside since the end of summer. And uh, it's not growing real fast, but it grows into a vine. So you can almost keep this like a house plant. And then you can eat the leaves. They're very tasty. And uh, I'm going to grow more of this outside this coming summer. So it's rooted real well. But I think I'm going to keep it in water rather than putting it in dirt for now till I get my plant room set up. So this is my breakfast for today. Um, for dinner, I have a little bit, tiny bit of soup left. And I'm not sure what else I'm going to eat with that for dinner tonight because I have uh, some baking I want to do today for dessert, uh, dessert for tomorrow. And just getting ready, I'm going to try and have a nice chill day. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully there's no big whoop de doos that happened today. All right. I'll be back well, later. today I decided, oh by the way, this is my new wash machine. <clears throat> I decided to bake a few cookies, kind of last minute, because that's the way I am. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, no, I do plan things too, but sometimes you just got to go with the flow. So these <clears throat> were from mixes I had in my stash, and I figured why not use them up? So these are Ghirardelli shortbread cookies that I've had. Um, they came in a mix and it comes with the chocolate and everything. So I made those. Um, these are Betty Crocker chocolate chip cookies. They're pretty good. Um, these were those Mrs. Fields cookies that I got at Dollar Tree. And I haven't tried those. I, I tried the Ghirardelli ones and I tried the uh, Betty Crocker ones and I'm kind of cookied out. But um, these are a flatter cookie. So I'm sure they'll be good. And then these were the uh, sugar cookies. I could have baked these a little less, but they're good. I mean, they're not dark, real dark. But for sugar cookies, I usually like things to be lighter. And then I also made some brownies. The kids all like brownies. So these were actually uh, Ghirardelli uh, chocolate caramel brownies. 
that I had in my stash. So all these cookies and brownies were things that I pulled out of my stash that really needed to be used up. So, and I'll give everybody cookie bags when they go. So uh, I'm glad I got those done. And it was no work. It was kind of relaxing. I'm listening to Christmas music and really I'm enjoying myself today. And it's still snowing and blowing out there. Not a fun day. Even the dogs don't want to go out. I don't blame them. All right, on to another project. Well, I'm pre-mixing this. I'm not going to bake it until tomorrow. I'm making a berry crumble. And I got this recipe from this little book that they had at the Dollar Tree. And this has some really, really nice recipes in them. And uh, this is what it looks like. And I think that looks delicious. That'll be nice after a Christmas dinner with some nice whipped cream served warm. And here are the ingredients. So, there you go. You can do a screenshot if you want a copy of the recipe. And it's cherry berry crumble. All right, so in here I have mixed up a cup of flour, a cup of quick oats, three quarters of a cup of sugar, quarter teaspoon salt, three quarter teaspoon baking powder. So those are the dry ingredients. And then I'm going to mix up the other ingredients separately and then tomorrow I will bake this. So just trying to prepare ahead so there's not so much stress and so it's very calm and I really really want to enjoy this holiday. So I'm listening to Christmas music and uh, just Amazon, Amazon playlist, just sort of random. I don't like like jingle bells and stuff like that much, but uh, right now uh, I like the prayer or Mary Did You Know, just those sorts of songs. All right, and I hope it doesn't <laughs> come through because they'll ding me for copyright. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit for this crumble. I already made the, uh, the crumble part. It was pretty easy. Now I'm doing this part. And um, I'm putting all this in the refrigerator until tomorrow. So in here there's half a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of cornstarch, a teaspoon of lemon peel. And I had this, these berries in my stash. And this is part of the reason why I want to use this up. Um, I want to use these berries. So that's part of the reason why I'm making this crumble. I'm trying to use up things that I already have. Not exclusively, but you know, for some of the desserts, the cookies, and, and now the crumble. Now this calls for three cups of cherries. I don't have frozen cherries, but I do have a can of uh, cherries, so I'm going to use that, and I'm just going to mix and match. Um, and then I need two teaspoons of lemon juice in here. Okay, so that's two. And uh, like I said, one teaspoon of lemon zest. So I'm just going to let this thaw. And then when it's all thawed out, I'm going to add the cherries, and then I'm going to refrigerate this until tomorrow, and I'm going to assemble it uh, before we eat it because um, I want to serve it warm. So, uh, 
I did a lot of prep with the cookies and this, so the desserts are going to be pretty much done. So uh, I also did my veggies. And I'm going to add some uh, tomato pesto to my veggies just to kick up the tomato flavor. And I have one uh, little pesto jar, pesto rosa, that needs to be used up. So I'm going to put that into my veggies. Okay, here's the pesto. I get this at Aldi's. And this is really good like on a non-pizza. So I might have that for dinner. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to have. It's getting to be about time. But here are my veggies that I cooked up yesterday and it's mainly squash and eggplant. So, um, and tomato. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of this pesto. And then, I don't want to add the whole thing, but um, I'll add the rest either to a pizza or to some lasagna. So, trying to use up what I have, and I think this will be really tasty. And I hope my guests like it too. I think I might add a salad, a green salad, but I'm not sure. If not, you know, this will be plenty of veggies. And boy, I'll tell you, my garage is like a refrigerator. It is cold out there. So what we don't eat tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and freeze of this, and then I'm going to make another dish with it. And I doubt if we'll eat all of this in the morning or tomorrow. All right, this was already seasoned. So I would say. Uh, a good half of my dinner is already made. So this is cold, but let me give it a taste. See if I should add some more pesto. Because I do have another jar of this that I picked up. I like to keep this on hand in my stash. It's good. All right, and then you can bake this to heat it up, put some Parmesan cheese on top, that would be good. Or you could put some Parmesan cheese in the sauce, that would be tasty. All right, so I'm going to set this aside, let it thaw, add this, and I'm going to put it in the fridge. I found this in my refrigerator too, and it's not like it was lost, I knew I had it. Some of this grated topping, and there's like this much left. I don't know, to me this does not have a whole lot of flavor. So I'm going to add about, oh, a quarter of a cup. That'll thicken this up a little bit, which will be nice. And like I said, I want to get rid of this, and this is from uh, Dollar Tree. Okay, well, it's dinner time, so I figured there's so much of this. I'm going to have a little bit of this for dinner, and I still have a couple of Impossible Meatballs. I'm going to heat those up, get rid of those. There's four of them. So that's something gone out of the fridge, or out of the freezer. And then I have a little tiny bit of soup left, the homemade soup I made the other day. I'm going to have that. And I just took some of the broth and cleaned out this um, Pesto Rosa jar. So I'm just going to add that right back into the soup. That's a good way to use it up. So that's another thing gone. And then I'm going to heat up these meatballs and add 
the um, veggies. And then I have this Walmart Italian bread. Since I don't have any pasta or rice cooked up, I'm just going to have a couple of chunks of this. And um, with a little butter. And that is going to be my dinner for tonight. So easy, no cooked dinner because I've been cooking all day. So I'm just going to heat this bread up a little bit since it's been in the fridge. And that is dinner. So I'll be back once I get this all plated up. Okay, this will be a nice hearty dinner. I have the meatballs and the veggies and some bread. I think that looks good. And then I have this little bit of soup. So, using up a lot of little leftovers in my refrigerator and freezer. Yes, I'm still at it. I'm going to add a little bit more of this grated topping. I'll put some on the bread. Like I said, I don't know, to me this doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. I'll put some in the soup. And there we go. So this chickeny soup is now an Italian-like soup. All right, well, I'm going to eat my dinner. And okay, well, dinner was good. It was easy. Uh, everything was already cooked. I just had to heat it up. <clears throat> Got rid of some uh, frozen meatballs. I put out some uh, Beyond Beef for the lasagna, so that'll be thawed by morning. <clears throat> because I do like a, a meat-like sauce in my lasagna. So that shouldn't take too long to put together tomorrow. I'm going to put it together early in the day and then just bake it, oh, an hour or a couple of hours before my family arrives, and then it'll be all set to eat. I'm not going crazy on the uh, appetizers either because a lot of times what happens is everybody gets so full on the appetizers that uh, they don't have time they don't have room for dinner so I'm not going to do that I'm, I'm really really making a conscientious effort to cut back on food and to cut back on time spent on the day of the celebration. Used to be I would be doing everything at the last minute because that's what it required. And then I just wouldn't enjoy myself. And by the time I got everything cleaned up, everybody was getting ready to go home. So now I cook everything and I know it's not, you know, the greenest thing, but oh well. Um, I cook everything in, you know, the throwaway um, pans you can get at the Dollar Tree. That way I don't have to clean up a nasty cheesy lasagna pan or uh, a lot of pots and pans. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And I started that a while back and I also don't use Christmas dishes anymore. In fact, I sold those. I had a service for 16 and uh, I was like, oh, should I sell them? Should I not sell them? And I hadn't used them in years. And then I ended up, I sold half. Uh, I, that's like sticking your toe in the water, you know. And then I ended up, it's like, I'm not going to use these. So I sold the second half of the set uh, this past uh, year. So, and I haven't missed them at all. I'm glad somebody else can enjoy them. They were in pristine condition. They looked beautiful. And they were so happy to get my dishes. So, and I was so happy that I got them out of the cupboard. So, all right. I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience this past year cooking down my food and what have I learned what am I going to do in the future? I just want to have a, a, a brief little talk here because I'm tired. 
I'm going to go take my shower and um, watch a little TV and relax. And then tomorrow I'll start over again with my, um, with my cooking. But I, I guess the biggest thing I've learned was that I don't eat as much as I thought I would eat. Um, I mean, I don't eat like a bird. I eat normal portions. But if you go by what you should be eating, I mean, you'd have a plate this big. And, you know, a lot of people have a weight problem because of that. And I've never really eaten a ton of food. I mean, when I was younger, my mom and I, we could eat more than my dad. We had a very high metabolism and we were very active, but that is in the rear view mirror. Um, my metabolism has slowed way down and it's not like I'm trying to um, lose weight or anything. That would be great if I did, but um, I just, I'm not hungry like I used to be. And I sit way more than I used to. I mean, I don't sit all day long. I do my chores and, you know, even when I'm on the phone, a lot of times I'll be walking around just because, not, not really for any other reason, but other than that's what I do. But, um, so anyway, I think that's the biggest, the biggest lesson I learned is the amount of food that I can eat. And I also learned that I don't need to buy a lot of foods to try new foods constantly. Now, I, I do it with the um, vegan meats. Sometimes I like to try new ones of those. But even that I've cut way back on. I found some that I like, and I like making my own. So, um, and some of the newer ones like that... Uh, burger I made the other day, I just, I don't like them. They're just not good. So I learned that to, to kind of stick with what I know and to stick with the basics, even with the stocking up. Stick with the basics. You don't need a hundred different things of stash food. You know, if, if you have certain things that you eat. Now, I eat a, a, a good variety of foods. I don't eat the same thing over and over and over again, for the most part. But um, I know what I like. I know what I'm going to eat. I know what portion size that I'm going to eat. So that's another thing that I really learned this year. Um... I still, I still have quite a bit of food at my mom's house that I need to bring over here. I did bring some of it over, and it's in my little freezer in the garage. And once I eat this meat down, or eat this food down that I have in the freezer up here in the kitchen, and I start bringing things in from the garage and bringing more things from my mom's, I eventually really would like to cut down to one freezer if possible and keep the other freezer for things like uh, maybe my garden veggies or if I can um, find produce at markdown prices because a lot of that needs to be processed like quickly um, and then just keep that in the freezer rather than buying more things that I would eat on a weekly basis and keeping that in the freezer out there. Just keep that more for uh, freezing produce and garden food. Um, another thing that I learned is that, and this kind of has to do with the freezing of the produce, that I can't eat that much produce either. Even if I get a big uh, or a 
flash food box, let's say, if I hadn't had company coming this week, I still would have had to freeze at least half of it because I can't eat all that squash and eggplant and all that in one week. I could eat, I could eat maybe a third of it and uh, you know the rest of it would go bad if I didn't freeze it. So, but even with the veggies that I cooked, I'm planning on probably freezing um, a quarter of it, let's say. I don't know how much my family will eat. If they eat it all, that's great. But I don't think they will because it's such a big pot. Plus that, I'm going to have the lasagna too. And I'm making two small pans of lasagna because I figured uh, my family loves it. And um, I'll probably save a portion for me in the freezer, and the rest of it they can take home and uh, have in their lunches. So I've learned a lot this year. It was, it was really fun. It was a fun thing to do, and it was an educational thing to do. And I highly encourage anybody that hasn't tried it. You don't have to go a year. Um, try a month and see if you can't um, cut back on your food. Um, and, and that's another thing that I learned is, is how much money I've spent in the past on food that ended up in the freezer and sometimes it didn't get eaten because it was in there too long. So, saving a lot of money on food, doing it this way, enables me to do very small, limited shopping. By keeping my stash fully stashed and cooking out of the pantry and the refrigerator and the freezer and just supplementing. That's what I do. I supplement with my shopping. And normally, I shop once a month. Now this month I shopped a little more often because I needed to buy some holiday food. But even, even that, I've used up a lot of food from my pantry and freezer that um, needed to be used up. So, and then I just supplemented with uh, fresh food like the cheese, the cottage cheese that's going to be going in the lasagna, and but the uh, the frozen grounds, I've had those, so I'm using those up, and I still have quite a bit of that. But the price on that has gone up, and this, the meat that I do have, not meat, <laughs> I always have to clarify, um, I bought on sale. It's normally a little packet which is uh, not even a pound I think it's 12 ounces is like $7.99 well I ended up buying most of what I got for uh, $4.99 or $5.99 because I bought it on sale and I haven't really seen it on sale lately so I'm, I'm very happy that I have the food that I have and I know I know I could go another year. I know I could. Just doing it the way I've been doing it. But, um, and I will keep cooking down my food, and I'll share some of that with you. The hardest part about this challenge for me was not eating a meal without documenting it. But I did that because, first of all, I wanted to be honest about what I was doing and what I was eating and what I was using up. But secondly, I documented it also for me um, so that I could look back on it and, and see what I did if I want to recreate it. So it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. And uh, for those of you that have been following me on my journey going through this, I so appreciate you. 
being here and we have become friends um, some people I know fairly well by now um, and I, I really enjoy that I like having friends from the YouTube family it, it's a lot of fun so anyway um, Oh, I was talking about the most difficult part of, of the challenge. Sometimes, if I didn't eat dinner until late, I could not finish my video and I couldn't upload it <laughs> until I got everything done. So that put me on a little bit of a time, uh, on a timeline, where normally I would say, oh, I'm not hungry. Or, or I'm hungry at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, or I'm not hungry till 7, which normally I don't eat that late. I eat earlier in the day, but I had to get it documented. So, <laughs> Or sometimes I would have said, ah, I'm just going to eat this, you know, a simple sandwich or something. And... Uh, but then I thought, no, I have to make it a little more interesting than, than that. So that was the hardest part about it. But I still, I enjoyed it all. And uh, it was a fun challenge. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I don't know how much I'll be uh, videoing tomorrow. Um... I want to be done with my video. If I do one tomorrow, I want to be done with my video before my family comes. I don't want to have to um, worry about uploading it and all that. So, we'll see. I'm going to wing it tomorrow. So, all right. I'll still continue to cook down till the end of the month. So, that's another week or so. And uh, but it, it won't be like it was the, the rest of the year. It'll just be random meals here and there that I think you might be interested in. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.